Oh hey down there, I'm Sarah and today I'm going to show you some of the best things to do here in Munich, Germany. Let's go! Gardens. I'm here at the English Gardens right now. It's a massive park that has everything from beer gardens to rivers to even river surfing. Essentially what it is is a giant wave that is on the river and you could actually surf on it. An interesting fact that I learned while I was researching this place was that they also have Quidditch tournaments here. So for those Harry Potter fans, check it out. Visit Olympic Stadium while you're here. This beautiful stadium is known for its revolutionary and contemporary architecture that is supposed to reflect the Swiss Alps. If you see behind me, it looks a little bit like mountains. You can do a rooftop tour and actually get harnessed up and climb along those beautiful mountain-looking rooftops. And at the end, one of the most awesome parts is you can zip line across it. It was really fun and I highly recommend it. Now the Olympics were here in this stadium in 1972 and they wanted to reflect a more positive image of Germany and certainly with this beautiful architecture it does the job. So when you come to Munich you should pick up the Marco Polo guidebook. It's probably the best way to see the city. This is Amadeus and he actually wrote the book so he, could you tell me a bit about it? Yeah, you, first of all, you have a lot of sightseeing things in, like the museum, and we have a lot of history in also. It's not only that we give you a tip and like, go there, you see a lot of art. It's also we try to give you special information, like inside tips. What is your number one tip? They should take a bike first. Yeah and explore the city like I do it always with New York City. Yeah. Just feel the heartbeat of the city and f just follow the flow. Don't go always where the typical tourist places are. Get your bike and you see the city on a totally different way. So much to see. There's just so much to see yeah. here in Munich and that's why your guidebook's so great because it goes through everything. You should taste the local craft beer when you're here. More and more microbreweries are popping up around Munich and you can even take a brewing course while you're here. So make sure to go to some of the breweries. One of the great ones is Hopfen Hacker, which is where I am right now. You can get a tour through the brewery and also try a massive variety of all the beers they have from spicy to earthy to fruity. Every different combination palette you could think of. Trust me, you'll find something you like here. At the Chinese Tower Beer Garden, you can have beer and these massive pretzels. Like, this is crazy. The Chinese Tower behind me was originally built in 1790, but it was destroyed in World War II and rebuilt. And they even have salads, which I really haven't seen at any other beer gardens. Can this get more German? Like, <laughs> Another great brewery is Polaner Nuckerberg. Now, this place literally has it all. They have an outdoor beer garden, an indoor area. They can fit up to 4,000 people. Plus, they have a world-class restaurant here where you can get great craft quality food. I just saw them cook this burger in the oven and it was just like unreal. So really cool place to check out here if you're into the craft beer scene. I'm at Wolf's Pharmacy Soda Bar here in Munich and this is a very unique bar. So you can come here for a drink and also a haircut. That is efficiency, my friends. It's designed in the spirit of an old-fashioned soda bar during the Prohibition times. So all the drinks are themed to Prohibition names, which makes it really fun. One of the drinks is called Johnny Torino, and you may be wondering, who is Johnny Torino? Well, Johnny Torino is the guy who got Al Capone rich back in the 1920s. But about this bar, it's unique because they have really interesting soda flavors like blackberry, cherry, chocolate. So if you're looking for a very unique speakeasy style prohibition bar here in Munich, this is the place to go. Don't miss it. <laughs> the most touristy place in München. Chinese, Japanese, Americans, South Africans, Canadians, they all go there. But as well the locals go there. Why? 
The answer is inside. <laughs> because the locals have something special. They have their own private beer safes. What's inside? Their own private beer glasses. They can drink the beer out of their own beer steins. And this is special. They have some regular tables with colorful signs. And it's called Stammtisch. That means regular. You have to come there so many times to drink there so much beer. And one day you will have your own private table. I just learned that the world record for the amount of mugs take a VIP tour, learn about the history, how the cars work, and even see a little bit of behind the scenes. It's a really cool experience and I highly recommend it. If you're hungry while at BMW, head over to Bavari. Here you can have a traditional Bavarian restaurant experience. This is a veal tartare and I'm obsessed. I love tartars generally, but I, I could just eat this all day long, I'm telling you. Savory. Mm. When you're here in Munich, stay at the 25-hour hotel. This hotel is really unique because it's themed to Royal Bavarian. The building itself was once a old telegraph station and it's now been transformed into a very interesting hotel. Around me you see I'm in a library area that has plush lounge chairs. Each room is completely different style. Uh, there's very interesting furniture. One of my favorite pieces is this chair that is just a bunch of swan heads. Just every turn, I'm surprised at what I see next. They also have two fantastic restaurants here and they have uh, free bike tours of the city. Highly recommend staying here when you're here in Munich. You'll love it, trust me. At Nini Munich here at the 25 hour hotel, you can dine on a combination of Israeli, Romanian, and Spanish cuisine with local influences. Essentially what it is, is you dine Bavarian style, which is similar to Spanish tapas. So all plates are shared and enjoyed. If you're looking for one of the best places to get a panoramic view here in Munich, you should check out St. Peter's Church in the center of the city. It has a 360 panoramic view around the top. It costs three euros to get in if you're over 18. If you're under 18, it only costs one euro, so it's pretty cool. I mean, the views are stunning. I imagine at sunset, it's absolutely incredible. Definitely a place you want to go if you love taking photos or if you just want to get that perfect shot of Munich. best biking cities? Well, I actually think it's the best way to tour the city, mainly because you get to see more sites plus you're being active. I recommend going with Radius Bike Tours and Rentals. It's only 29 euros for a two hour tour through parks, around riverbanks, through plazas, and through medieval walkways. So it's really beautiful and it's a great way to see Munich. When the Central Market became too big in 1807, King Maximilian moved it here to the Victuala Market. Here you can get food all different types, all different things, there's huge variety and that's what it's well known for here in Munich. And now I'm going to try some things, some traditional German food. And Oh, here's the first thing. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. This is beet juice, so starting healthy, ending not healthy at all. I reserved it for you and it's so called Feening Muckal and it's and the dough is made out of rye and this comes from the last real grid mill in München. Flour cheese, this is a Dutch cheese and this is, comes really from the mountain area. But the most interesting cheese is this one. Obatsta.
This is a Bavarian pretzel. They got me a Rattler. This is a lemonade mixed with beer. <laughs> it's really refreshing. It tastes like just almost carbonated lemon with slight beer. Thanks for watching my video on unique things to do in Munich. If you like this video, remember to subscribe, follow me on Instagram, and I will see you next time.